have you asked an electrician to carry out some work for you? And he said he can't do the work until he installs an RCD. And you don't know what an RCD is. And you're thinking, hmm, do I need one? Well, let's have a look, see if you do. I have another video which tells you what an RCD is and what it does. This video is about if you actually need an RCD at all. Okay? So, do you need an RCD? If you're getting any new work done, then yes, you probably do. But it depends what you're getting done. RCDs weren't a requirement in older editions of the wiring regulations. So if your installation is older than 30 years, it probably hasn't got an RCD on circuits. If it's 20 years old, you probably have some RCD protection on socket circuits. Now if it's 5 years old, it should have RCD protection on most circuits. But the regs aren't respective, so if you're not getting any work done, you just wanted a safety test, for example, on your house. You don't necessarily have to have an RCD because they weren't required at the time. But if you're having any new work done, you should have an RCD on most circuits. We're going to have a little bit of a look at that. Now, are you getting new work done? If you are getting new work done, it's highly likely that you will need to have RCD protection on the circuit involved. Now, so is the cable going to be buried in the wall? Is it fading a socket? Is it fading a lighting circuit? Is it something that the manufacturer recommends that you have RCD protection? Say for car charging, or underfloor heating, or electric showers? Is it in a special location? Is it a bathroom? Is it outdoors? Or have you got a particular type of earthing system, such as a TT system? If you've got a TT system, you need an RCD. You've needed an RCD for a long time if you've got a TT system. They're probably the earliest thing to be protected by RCDs. So these are the new works that require RCD protection. So it's pretty much catch-all, really. Most cable is buried in the wall, and that fact alone will mean that the cable needs to be RCD protected. So, any new work, yes, you will need an RCD. Right, so in your existing electrical installation, do you need an RCD? Well, pre-2008, which was the 17th edition where RCDs became a lot more prevalent, you probably didn't need an RCD apart from certain circumstances. If your cable was buried in the wall pre-2008, it didn't need to have RCD protection. Or if it fed a socket circuit, it did need to have RCD protection. The exception was if it was feeding a socket which could power outdoor equipment such as a lawnmower, then yes, that did need to have RCD protection. Lightning circuits didn't need RCD protection. But if the manufacturer recommended it pre-2008 that you have an RCD, then yes, you did need one. So if you've got a shower, electric shower in place, and it hasn't got an RCD, that's that's more like more than likely incorrect. You probably you should have one. RCDs should be on showers because most manufacturers recommend it. Um, bathrooms didn't require RCD protection, but you did require it if you had earthing uh, systems such as a TT system. As you can see nowadays, two thousand nineteen and onwards, you're going to need an RCD for everything, but you don't necessarily have to have an RCD in your house. So if you've just had a safety test and the electrician said, oh, I need to put an RCD on this, that's not necessarily the case, unless it was a requirement at the time or it's new work. But I would like to point out that RCDs are a good thing to have protecting your electrical installation and retrofitting them will make your installation safer. There's nothing wrong with adding RCD protection if it's not there. But you have to Bear in mind that these RCDs are very sensitive devices and they pick up a lot more faults that the older fuses didn't pick up. So if you are having replacements or retrofitting RCDs, it's important that the electrician does a good test of your installation to make sure that you're not going to get any future issues and any nuisance tripping. We'll have a chat about that. So retrofitting RCDs to older installations can be problematic. In this example, this fuse board won't accept an RCD unit. It's a rewirable board. It's got some push MCBs as well. But you couldn't actually add RCD protection into this board. So if you wanted a new socket, for example, 
the electrician would look at the board and say, well, I can't install the socket powered off this board because it hasn't got RCD protection. And then he might start saying, well, we're going to have to change the board or add RCD protection somehow. And the costs start going up and you're thinking, hang on, this is not right. But it is right. The electrician has to provide RCD protection on any of the new work that you're having done. And a board like this is not suitable. You can't add RCD protection to this board. We'll look at a few more examples. So here we have a more modern board, but there's still no RCD protection in here on this fuse board. But with this type of board, it is possible to retrofit an RCD device. We'll have a look. So this is very much like the previous fuse board, except this time we do actually have RCD protection. There's two in this board. These are RCDs which protect individual circuits. And there's one on this circuit here, and one on this circuit here. RCBO, that is a standalone RCD, which will protect one circuit. And you can tell it's an RCD because it's got a test button on it. These are just regular fuses. They don't have RCD protection. But if there's a test button on it, it will be an RCD. So that's a good way of telling what's what in your board. In this board, there's also two RCDs, but these are slightly different because what these do is these protect a group of circuits. So this RCD is protecting these four circuits and this RCD is protecting these three circuits. The only issue here is it is offering good RCD protection, but if there's a fault on any one of these circuits, this will trip. If there's a fault on any one of these circuits, this device will trip. And that can cause a nuisance, so you might blow a light bulb and downstairs lightning circuit, but that's going to take out the RCD, which will switch off the kitchen socket, the upstairs lightning circuit, whatever this circuit's doing. So it can cause nuisance tripping. And this is why it's important, if you are getting RCDs retrofitted, to make sure that there's no issues currently on your electrical installation, because this RCD will pick up the tiniest fault and trip the power off, and in this example, you can lose power to a number of circuits, which can be a real nuisance. So it could be the case that to get RCD protection, you do have to have a new fuse board installed, which obviously can start costing quite a lot of money. Uh, a good electrician can offer certain other solutions, depending on the work that you need doing. There are things such as RCD fuse spurs and just RCD sockets which are cheaper solutions and can provide localised RCD protection to certain items. You could use a fuse spur, for example, for one socket, or you could use it to protect a lighting circuit. So there are some solutions out there which don't necessarily need a new fuse board. And a good electrician will talk you through this. OK. To summarise this video, if you're having any new work done, it will require RCD protection really. Your house doesn't have to have RCD protection added if you're not having any new work done. But it's not a bad thing to have if you retrofit it. If it is getting retrofitted, your electrician needs to make sure that the installation will not cause any nuisance tripping because of the sensitivity of the new device. So speak to your electrician, we're well, good lads, they'll sort it out and um, make your installation a lot safer and offer you some good advice and some options if it starts getting a bit pricey.